Hello friends, uh, so yeah, we have completed fragment part also in PF18. Uh, now we are jumping to the authentication policy building. Uh, it's very, again, very important session, right? Because uh, uh, we'll just try to build a policy here in this session, right? And this will really help you to understand uh, like, yeah, how uh, in the previous session we discussed about data store, right? We discussed about PCB, we discussed about different types of adapter. We discussed about authentication selector. We discussed about fragment, right? Now is the time to bring all those things and uh, let's build a logic, right? Let's build, let's develop a logic. Uh, and uh, uh, as per that, like a user can experience different kinds of authentication, right? So it's time to build that. So in the policy, we are going to do that only. And you can really understand uh, after this session that, yeah, what is the usage of all? And you have a very good understanding of the ping fit concept. And then you are very good uh, uh, to onboard an application for single sign on because onboarding an application just it will ask few options you need to know. But before that, you need to create all those things what we discussed right from PF uh, 14 to PF 19, right? These all things are very important. And once you have a very good understanding of this, you can really understand, uh, you can really create those things as per the requirement. You can understand from the theme and you can build that in the ping filter. And yeah, you can just configure that and it can just use can get that uh, experience, right? Uh, once you build that logic. So yeah, let's begin. And if you have any confusion, any question, please put in the comment section for policy building or any other topic also. We can uh, we can just read, uh, read uh, discuss that or we can just uh, take another session for that topic, right? If you have any confusion. But for now, let's quickly jump to the authentication policy. And then with a few topics uh, like uh, certificate management, SAML uh, binding, uh, like uh, real estate, SP versus ITP, then metadata. And then we can quickly jump to the SAML application on body, right? We'll just create a developer account in Salesforce and uh, we can just try to integrate Salesforce with our ping filter, right? To get a single sign, on, right? So we can see and we can just do all the tests, all those testing also, right? Because yeah, right now we are building the things, right? We are not testing. So uh, while doing the ap application onboarding in the PF25, we can do those all testing, right? Uh, so it will really help you to understand the things. So yeah, let's begin and uh, we can quickly discuss on policy building, yeah. We basically understand uh, selector right which basically helps in the decision making right we understand the fragment that is basically helping to make the policy easy to administer right then we understand adapter right which basically helping to uh, trigger an authentication right now you have like different types of authentication right like uh, Kerberos right and you have form based you design all these authentication right form based then you have uh, certificate right then you have multi-factor so you design all this authentication uh, mechanism in uh, by using adapter in ping filter right but now how you are going to trigger this authentication for some application right for an example if a user access some application that is configured with ping filter so how you are going to trigger this authentication sources to that user right because you build right but you just need to know how you how, how you're going to trigger this so that where like our selector is playing a role and fragment is just like helping to yeah like making things easy like for administering uh, administering and other other advantages also we have seen there right okay so now like let's quickly let's create some policy and then yeah we can see how how basically policy is working right so let's quickly go to the ping for trade console go to authentication tab go to policy and now let's quickly create a policy like for just mention here is the identity like where ping fed acting as identity provider as the service provider right in both the cases let's select for now let's mention here as a policy for open dj open dj means like open dj adapter like using that uh, open dj i will say authentication okay now for first we need to just select a, uh, add a selector here right because that is going to make some decision right so in selector we we just choose like uh, yeah that we mention as a open dj authentication right like uh, or you can just mention here like uh, policy form based open dj okay like this policy form based open dj okay now just select just first try to select a selector so let's uh, do for now let's uh, uh, because we may mention as open DJ, that means we want the user to be get authenticated using open DJ, right? That's fine. We can define that, but let's choose here like CID for an example, right? So once you select this CID, that means uh, a decision ping fit is going to take a decision, right? Whether user is coming from internet or intranet, right? On that basis, you have a no and yes. 
or no that means you are in the that network prime network and yes that you are coming from the internet right now in the no like if you are in the network then i just want to give you some adapter right uh, some authentication sources so for that i'm not going to define adapter directly here as i just uh, discussed in the fragment section right we can simply define the fragment that will basically makes the thing easy right to administer this policy so i'll just simply go here i'll choose here as a fragment okay and then i'll choose a open dj fragment okay and again we have the fail and success case so for fail let's click on done and for success we can just go for the policy contract okay same thing and we just need to do the contract mapping also let me do this quickly choose open fragment as open dj Let's choose the value as an email as an email. Subject as a username and yeah, username. Is a. Click on next, next, and just done and save this. Yeah. Before saving, yeah. So basically, you are just define here like no for this fragment, and for yes, like you can define like if you are coming from the internet side. So I'll just give you some another uh, adapter or not adapter. I'll say as a fragment, right? Because here we are just working with the fragment thing. Okay, so I'll just choose a fragment again. I'll go to fragments. I'll choose another like uh, SUPC for an example. Yeah. <coughs> okay, fail for done. I'll say again, and then for success again, I'll choose the authentication policy contract. Like policy contract, I'll choose PF learning, and then I just need to do, do the contract mapping again. Go to next. Choose here the fragment. S U P C V. Choose the value as email. Username. Username. Okay. Let's click on next. We can do all this testing once we have the application ready and yeah. Maybe after two or three sessions we can go for the testing. So this policy looks here. It's created basically. So you have a policy like uh, I'll say not form this. I'll say as a C I D R policy. That is basically just checking the user is coming from which network, right? So for this we have the policy which basically look for first selector and then we have the no and yes. For the no we have some fragment and for the yes we have the fragment and in that again fail and success we have the case. And for success we have the contract mapping, right? This is one of the case you can see commonly uh, utilized. But like if we are not going to use fragment, then I need to define uh, adapter, right? That means the authentication source directly, and then we need to define the all the failure cases, right? If yes, no, like that. But if we simply define the fragment, that means yeah, we if we want to make some changes in authentication pattern, then I'm not supposed to touch this policy. I can simply go to this fragment, and I can update that. So this policy will automatically update, right? So let me click on done and save this. Yeah, okay. Let me save this first. Yeah. Now let's try to click uh, create one more policy. Okay, this is just for explanation. I just created. Okay, just for the understanding part. Now let's create here policy for extended property. Okay, extend property selector. Okay. So first, what we'll do? We'll simply just select. Uh, go for the selector selection. That is a condition check first thing, right? You can choose any other thing also for the condition check, right? Directly you can define adapter, connections, selectors, fragments like that. So we are basically checking the selector for checking the condition, right? I'll choose here as a EPS, extended property one, right? Once I select here, you can see all the result values will uh, populate here, right? Composite, HTML form of NDJ, HTML form of SUPCV. Now, once the attribute value is composite, right? It means in the application you map as a composite. So that means you want that application to trigger a composite uh, adapter authentication so i just go here i'll just select a fragment okay and i'll choose here as a composite fragment and then again the fail and success case will come i'll just uh, update quickly that also so again go for the fragments and choose here html form open dj yeah <laughs> and then for the html form supc we again just go and select that fragment and then just select as UPC, okay, like this. Now again, you just need to for the failure, just click on done for success. Just uh, go for the policy contract mapping, right? Just choose PF learning. 
one just yeah do the same thing for here also so basically you are simply just defining the like uh, fragment and then just doing the policy contract mapping uh, this is for uh, open DJ, yeah and simply doing the sorry what happened no uh, sorry I made some mistake HTML form open DJ this fragment key and then fail for done success for I'm giving another fragment no I just need to give the policy contract right and do the contract mapping for SUPC we again fail for done so basically I just uh, define the three attribute values and based on that we have the authentication sources defined okay policy contract then just to define this PF learning and then quickly do the contract mapping okay just go to next let's choose icon 3 composite and 3 composite email as an email username username yeah just click on next and just next and then yeah now let's come for the next one so this is done do the for html from open dj this is into the contract mapping right so that like at the time of building a connection you can see that how you are going to get the values by using this AI authentication policy contract right so username as a username click on next next click on done and you have left with last one so do the contract mapping for SUPCV also go to next choose source as a SUPCV 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 and then just put a value here as a email subject as a username and here also username so yeah uh, I think once we onboard an application we just need to go for a very long testing yeah, for all the policies selector fragments everything yeah so you can see like that we define the selector and based on that we have the values and then we have the fragment defined for each of this we are not defining the authentication source directly here in the policy rather than we are just defining the fragment so that in case if we need to modify the policy we can simply go to fragment and update that right no need to test the policy that's the advantage of this fragment so let me save this and do the rapid cluster management replicate yeah <coughs> Okay, so we have two policy created like uh, let me go to policy back we have one for policy CIDR maybe we are not able to test this but yeah we can test this excellent property and maybe uh, if you want like you can like uh, I think what uh, authentication source we have so I think this in this like we are basically covering all the authentication sources right so maybe for connection set like you can try one like okay that selector we haven't covered so just mention as a policy 3 and then just go here choose a selector and just choose here like uh, connection set of the CSS okay and then just yeah no and yes so like, like yeah if the application is mapped to this selector then it's basically matching right so you can just choose here as a some adapter you, uh, fragment you can give here again the same thing like just define the fragment and yeah, if yes then just give like uh, maybe open DJ okay and if not if that application is not matched with this connection set authentication selector right then you can just give another fragment that is uh, cupcv okay like this and just do the same thing fail for done success for just define the same thing yeah policy contract pf learning right and then go for the contract mapping Subject for username, let's put username. Okay, <coughs> this is done. Now let's go for the like, yeah, if this application is mapped under the selector, then you have this fragment open DJ. So let's fail for them and success for again. Do the same thing like choose the policy contract and do the contract mapping. Contract mapping means basically you are just defining the attribute values, right. So that like uh, once you just onboard an application using the selector right under that you can choose the APC 
and then you can define the value so this this is this 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 uh, using this policy that this is the way it's basically going to bring the values if you are choosing as a source as a authentication policy contract for any any of the attribute okay so email for email subject of the username and here also username next next click on done and just save this okay so this is done right so basically we have three selector now in the picture let me do the cluster management okay so this is done like policy section is completed now and we have three policy in the picture right so one with the CIDR just we build like if user is from this network then how that fragment is going to trigger and under fragment we have defined the authentication sources that means authentication mechanism basically and then we just use for extended property that if an application is using this and you have some attribute values defined so yeah as per the attribute you have the fragment defined and policy 3 we use for the connection based set authentication selector right if an application is mapped to that connection based set authentication selector then you have the yes and no condition right so in, for yes we have some authentication sources that means we define the fragments so in the policy you can see basically we're just defining the selector and fragments and under fragments we have the authentication sources defined like for example simple username pcv if you go so you have the adapter defined which basically triggering the authentication and then you have the contract mapping which is helping to bring the attribute values in the application connection so yeah i think you understand the concept of selector policies adapter data store pcvs for now the fragment set or an authentication policy contract also if you have any confusion here please put in the comment section we can discuss again but yeah i think like just uh, as i did please just create these policies create these selectors right create these adapters and try to do some testing right that we are going to do in after three uh, three or four sessions right so this way it is really going to more clear but for now i think you have now the concept of ping feeder right uh, about policies uh, data store ping uh, pcv adapter selectors authentication policy contracts fragments yeah all these things are very very important in ping feeder right so I hope you have uh, you understand this thing. If you have anything, please put in the comment section. We'll discuss again. And yeah, let's uh, jump for the next session. And I think we have the next as a PF20 that is certificate management and types of certificates. So we'll discuss about encryption and self-signed certificate, CA signed certificate, how we are going to sign the response for being federated. Yeah, we can just talk on all those things. Okay, so thank you and have a good day. Let's meet on next video.